Greetings, everybody. My name is Ron, and this is my YouTube channel. And today, we're going to be discussing FL Studio 21's newest synthesizer called Kepler. It's based on an older analog synthesizer, and it's like an emulation or an adaptation, whatever they call it, when they make a replica that's in software. And it's excellent. So I'm going to show you how to use it, and we're going to look at some of the sound design that it can do. But first, I had a question about how you actually load it. So when FL Studio makes new plugins sometimes, if you were to go to the plugin section of the browser, you will notice that there are different, let's call them levels or types of like layers of plugins. So you've got effects that are fruity, VST, VST3, generators. When you install something new, it'll say new over here. So it'll be sorted into that category until you do a fast scan. And the same thing applies to the mixer. The reason why this is relevant is because that's what they did here. So if you go to this plus sign and you open the channel rack, right click, you see that all of those different categories open up. So you see classic synthesizers, special synthesizers, Kepler's in the section called new. And if you just click it normally, then you see that it's right here. They gave it its own section. That's why it's difficult to find. And that's why it doesn't appear in the browser. So that's the way that you load it. But with that being said, let's get into what it does. So it's a synthesizer like any regular synthesizer with a couple unique features that I really like. So first, we're going to look at all the different things it can do. So going from right to left, I'm going to explain these briefly and Hopefully, they will make sense to you. So, if you look all the way to the right, you've got the chorus section, which literally is just the chorus section. There's nothing special about it. It just adds chorus when you turn these on. And you can turn them both on, or you can turn one on. Cool. Right here, you've got the envelope section, which is attack, decay, sustain, and release. So, I did a video about these a while back. And you can watch that for more details. But basically... Attack makes something a crescendo. Decay is how long it takes to get quiet again. Sustain is how loud it is when you hold down the keys. And release is like it has a tail, kind of like reverb. So if we look here, you see that there is an output knob because sometimes when you're synthesizing, adding all the different waveforms together, as you can see, the different waveforms are here. When you add them together, they might be too loud. And then you have to turn it down. But if you filter, they might be too quiet. And then you have to turn it up. I feel like this kind of goes without saying regardless that things just have output knobs now. But that's the reason why, specifically for synthesizers. Over here, this thing controls. If you add noise, which you would do using this. If you add noise, this controls the way that the noise is gated based upon the envelope or based upon the other way that the plugin does it. Now, everything here in this VCF, this is all to do with the low pass filter. And it's easy to remember because the high pass filter is right next to it. So this slider is simply a high pass filter and this is simply a low pass filter. That frequency is only low pass, this frequency is only high pass. And these things only correspond to the low pass filter. This is resonance which makes a boost wherever the frequency cutoff of the low-pass filter is at. And this right here, it controls the polarity of these. So whether it is going up or it is going down. If you increase this, the low-pass filter is controlled by this ADSR environment, or envelope rather. If you increase this, it's controlled by this LFO over here. And if you increase this, then it's controlled by what key you press on the keyboard. High pass filter is self-explanatory. It just takes out the low frequencies. And then we get to the fun part. So over here, you've got the different waveforms. By default, it instantiates with just a sawtooth wave. And you can't really do anything to that outside of like filtering it or adding chorus. Nothing special. But if you add this square wave, then when you increase this, it sort of makes bass because the square wave is always an octave lower than these two. 
as I said previously, this adds noise. So it's literally just like a white noise generator. You turn it up. If you turn this up, that's when you have the square wave. So if this is turned on, but this is down, then it's not going to play that one octave lower square wave. And it makes sense because you would want to turn this on and increase this if you just want noise. So if you go here, this is a pulse wave, which is a different type of waveform. And here, this PMW stands for pulse wave modulation. And you've got different ways you can control it using this button. So you can control it with the LFO. You can control it manually if you want to automate it. And you can control it with the envelope. This LFO doesn't relate to this LFO over here, but this LFO changes the speed of how fast the pitch modulates of this waveform. So it kind of goes like, like a police siren, but that gets faster and faster. So then you've got the LFO, which is self-explanatory. It's a low frequency oscillator. Increasing this makes the rate faster. If you click this, or, you know, anytime you have these red buttons above them, it changes it to be tempo synced. So you don't have to calculate how fast it needs to be in Hertz. And if we look at this slider right here, this is the delay time. So essentially you've got this button. And if you switch this from auto to manual, what that means is while this is set to auto, when you press a key, it will automatically trigger the LFO. But if you set it to manual, then when you want to trigger the LFO, you have to press this. So that leads to the possibility of automation. And that's the whole purpose. This delay time is how long it takes after this is pressed for the LFO to begin. So it would be interesting to figure out what to use that for, but I haven't really delved into it so much. And this LFO rate controls this environment and it controls this pulse width modulation. So those are the things that you're going to use it for. Now, beyond that, you've got this arpeggiator. And what an arpeggiator does is you can think of it as like it splits what would be a long sustained note into like multiple notes of whatever speed you choose. But most of the time, I would say either eighth notes or sixteenth notes. If you look at this, this tells you what direction they're going to play in. So let's say if I play F, then it's going to want to play the next F. Or let's say if I play a chord, because if you play a chord, let's say you play F, A, C, E, then this is the direction that they will play in. So they will go up that scale. So it'll play F and then it'll play a, C, E, and it will go upward in pitch. If you have the second one on, you see at the top left, it says up and down. Then it will go up to the highest note, and then it will come back down. This, this next part, is actually a bug where it says up again, but that would just make it go down rather than being up twice. That's actually something that they just need to fix. And here, it controls the number of octaves it'll go. So if this is set to one, it'll go up one octave, two, it'll go up two, and three, it'll go up three. And the last two things to mention that, so you'll know how to use it. Here you have a whole, a whole button that is kind of like a sustain pedal for a piano. That's the way it's described in the manual. So when you hold it down and you play the note, the note will just continue to play until you release the whole button. And these right here control the pitch again. So the one in the middle, when it's high lit, it means that it'll play whatever note you actually play. If you select this one, the note will be an octave higher. If you select this one, the note will be an octave lower. All of that is like the way that you control Kepler. Now let's look at some sound design because it's actually a lot of fun. So what I'm going to do is just go to the default setting and I guess I'll add an EQ. Okay, so now by having this 
We can just look at the EQ. It's just entertaining graphically. We can see what's going on. All right, so let's get into it. So it defaults with the sawtooth wave. You can see. Sawtooth waves are good. They have a lot of upper harmonics. What I like to do is add the chorus effect. I tend to use them both because it just sounds cool. Take the sustain down, lower the decay a little bit. Maybe increase release. And you've got a pluck sound now. So then I will add this right here, increase this. And it just makes it sound a little bit more colorful. It's interesting, you know, rather than just sounding like a sawtooth wave. If you want to have something that has a ton of harmonics, then you add this. You can see it covers the entire spectrum. Sounds like that are really rich and they'll stand out in the mix. You can high pass. You can low pass. You can do both. And then it's like a band pass. Resonance adds character to the sound. Then I tend to go to either the LFO or the arpeggiator. So for right now, arpeggiator. So it's going to continue arpeggiating that. What's cool is if you switch this to three and then you add, you just play one note. I made a short before and I was just doing that. But even that would be some awesome bass if you're making like a hip hop song. So let's go on and look at adding an LFO to the filter. Now, if you leave this up here, usually it's not going to do anything for it to actually filter even with the LFO because this is the strength of it. So how much it's affected, you have to lower the frequency. So. See, like that. Now I'm going to be honest. I don't know what you would ever use that sound for, but it doesn't hurt to know how to make it so you can figure it out, you know. <laughs> Leave a suggestion in the comments. You can make something really goofy, probably. All right. So let's go back to default again. And let's consider making a sound for a video game. So just add these two. Turn this up. Chorus, chorus. Leave the sustain up. And we're going to pulse width. And I'm going to turn up the LFO. Then, I'm going to go here, switch that to up and down, arpeggiate it. And actually, I'm going to lower the sustain. So, And this is one of the things I'm most excited about this plugin for. The prospect of like maybe making video game music. Like, it'd be so cool. All right. And then the last one I'm going to do is just replicate what I did before. So in the short, pretty much what I did, turn this off, turn these two on. I reduced this a little bit, reduced this some more. Chorus, chorus. And then I added this, turn the saw wave up. Pulse width, 
Awesome LFO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this was on up. There we go. I turn this down an octave too. And you gotta hold it. Now what's cool about this also is if you just press hold, then you can just press whatever note you want and it will still hold that same way. And I guess as a bonus, Noise. So, like, drum roll. Maybe even, like, rain. If you do that, maybe add reverb to it, then you definitely could make the sound of rain from just that. But I digress. That's all I got for you today. And I hope that if you're watching this video, you're as excited about this plugin as I am. With that being said, thank you for watching. And regardless of what you do, have an awesome day. Peace.